Hello, I'm Millie Fay. I began my career as a portrait painter at 14 before training at Sheridan College and graduating as a classical animator. Finally, circumstances led me to become an author, illustrator, and creator of Millie Fay art. I'm always happy to share what I know. In this video, I'm going to answer some common illustration interview questions. I always wanted to make this world a better place. I believe I can do this through writing and illustrating. Stories and beautiful images can inspire, support, gift courage, crush doubt and fear. They can heal. I believe they can allow people of all ages to escape the horrors they're suffering and return them to the world stronger than before. In my stories, I reflect the world that is as the world I wish it could be. Modesty. I was raised to be modest until college graduation when suddenly I was expected to become the exact opposite. From schoolwork to any position I ever held, my work was deemed excellent. I have always exceeded expectations and have pushed the bar beyond what anyone thought was possible. However, whenever I need to speak about my accomplishments, I wish to disappear instead. But here I am, pushing myself and embracing discomfort. Honestly, in my perfect world, I would be allowed to create while someone else enjoys the spotlight. The illustrators and artists I admire, inspire and influence my work. I love the work of classic Disney animation Maria Pasquale, Grand Basset, Monet, Sargent, Mucha, Claire Wendling, Peter DeSev, J. Scott Campbell, Stephen Silver, Norman Rockwell. These artists and other artists I continue to meet, especially through social media, influence the way I draw. If I had to describe my natural style, I would say it is like classical Disney animation, but with more anatomy and detail. I'm still working on the beautiful line work I admire in Pasquale's and Campbell's work, as well as movement and structure found in Wendling's and De Sev's. I love taking my style, my natural way of drawing, and pushing it in different directions for different projects. For example, when working on Albert and covers, I made my style a bit more graphic for the middle grade audience, while when I was asked to illustrate an article for National Geographic, I pushed my style into realism. You may notice Monet's influence in my paintings, since instead of painting with solid colors, I tend to layer patches of semi-translucent colors on top of one another. I believe this creates an illusion of life and movement. My style does change and grow as I change and grow. I hope it continues to do so throughout my lifetime. However, though my style may be fluid, what never changes is my commitment to draw out a required emotional response from the viewer. Marketing. I'm a creator. I wish to spend all of my time creating. It is the one drawback to working as an independent artist. I resent the time I have to spend being a business person. This is the reason that I'm looking to partner with a passionate team of individuals who have the expertise to enable my work to reach audiences on a global scale. I believe a good illustrator is someone who can emotionally connect with an intended audience, is easy to work with, and is extremely skilled as an artist. I also think an illustrator should have some knowledge of other jobs involved in creating the finished project. Personally, I felt compelled to understand the process from conception to completion. For example, with Animals in My Hair, my very first fully created and published book, I gained a deep appreciation of the complexity it takes to have a great product. I am certain that this deep understanding of the publishing process will continue to be essential with my ongoing and future project collaborations. I enjoy working on any project that has great storytelling and strong characters. I also choose to work on projects that are a positive influence in this world. If there is an educational element, all the better. I like variety. 
As long as there is a challenge I can sink my teeth into, I'm happy. Recently, I've been creating cover art, and I love the challenge of communicating what the book is about with a single image. My favorite subject matter are people, all ages, genders, races, and cultures, including fantasy characters and creatures. As a classically trained artist, I can draw anything. However, I do not enjoy drawing technical illustrations or stories that are centered around technology and architecture. In my illustrations, I introduce those elements when they are necessary to support the mood of the story and characters. In my experience, half of creation is research and the other half is magic. I always begin every project with research. I do not thumbnail a lot. Um, maybe that comes from not having enough paper to work with as a child during sections. I work on most of what I wish an image would look like in my head. Then I create a few thumbnails to figure out the layout on paper. Frequently, the ideas come to me in dreams, during a shower, uh, when I'm washing dishes. Sometimes characters insist on being included, like the miming animals in my hair. Similarly, some stories simply insist on being told. I often feel like a powerful, almost outworldly source compels me to create and share the untold stories and images. That is the half I refer to as magic. Whenever I get a project, I always begin with the research. I research the story, elements in the story, what others have done with similar stories, where this work would fit on a shelf. I want my work to stand out, but also to feel familiar. I think a lot. Then, when I have worked on most of what I need to do in my head, I thumbnail a few quick sketches to figure out the layout. Afterward, I begin to sketch. These days, I do all my sketching on the Cintiq Companion in Photoshop. I find it speeds up the process, allows me to share my work with fans, and save some trees. The downside is that I do not have sketches to give away or sell. Once I'm happy with the sketch, I clean it up and paint the final artwork. Depending on the requested finish, this can be either done traditionally usually ink and watercolor, or digitally. If paintings are finished traditionally, the last step is to scan the artwork and perfect it digitally before exporting and submitting the files. <laughs> no, I do not have creative slums. My problem tends to be the opposite. I have so many ideas and not enough time to bring them all to fruition. Occasionally, I would encounter a creative problem. Uh, when this happens, I would stop what I'm doing, I would go for a walk, uh, exercise, or do something else, then return to my work refreshed. My mind problem solves even when I'm sleeping. For example, while I was working on the polar bear drawing and the animals in my hair, no matter what I did, I could not make the bear look big enough. Then. About a month after I was dealing with this problem, I woke up in the middle of the night with remove the background. Problem solved. I'm currently excited about Every Girl is a Princess project. Recently, princesses have received a bad rep and I want to refocus onto the positive. I want to create a series of artworks featuring actresses as princesses that will empower and motivate everyone with words of wisdom. I intend to have a gallery show and use the artwork to raise funds for a women's shelter in Toronto. I am also working on my epic fantasy novel, Warriors of Virtue, about a reluctant princess who grows into a queen as she defends Arden from dragon people. This fantasy was a way for me to cope with the horrors of war and life's many tribulations. It is rare for a fantasy genre to have its main characters not be orphans, outcasts, or children of broken homes. 
I explore how someone who has lived a sheltered, pampered life could cope with that life falling apart. I also introduce a villain who commits horrible acts of violence, believing he is making the world a better place. There are several picture books floating around in my mind as well. The continuation to Animals in My Hair, A Shark in My Toilet, teaches numbers to 100 involving endangered sea creatures and a boy's first solo bath. Just Dance, a story about a girl who solves all problems with dancing until the moment she may never dance again. A Dog Please, a story about a little girl from an obscenely wealthy family who wants a dog, only to be gifted exotic animals as pets. Lucky Penny, a story about a newly minted penny who thinks he is special, only to discover how worthless he is in the world until he finds love. Well, there you have it. Thank you for watching the interview. If you have further questions or would like to work with me, you can reach me at millie.fay at artofmillie.ca.